I heard that you are looking for deploying and capturing an image using Microsoft Deployment Toolkit. Well, you are in the right place, my friend. You are in the right place. Hello fellow YouTubers, this is Nick from NLB Solutions and today we are continuing the Windows Server 2016 series with the next part, the second part of our deployment and then later customization and capturing of Windows 10 Enterprise image. And of course, as you know from the previous video, I've already deployed this new image and it's a brand new Windows 10 operating system and there are no programs currently installed. But who does need such an image? Of course, this image needs to be customized according to your needs, your business needs. So depending on your needs, you may have different varieties of software installed. So for this one, I'm going to use my domain controller, which is DC01, you can see it right here. And I will use my Windows deployment server, which in there I have the MDT currently installed. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to switch to the newly deployed Windows 10 virtual machine and we are going to install some software. Now that we are back in my virtual machine, that is a clean uh, virtual machine, what I did is I've pre-downloaded few free applications. There are small applications that uh, I'm going to install and later use to capture the image. And that way we can confirm that when we deploy this image on a later state, it will include the applications that you've uh, customized. Depending on your scenario, of course, you can uh, use and you can deploy, you can install different applications that are third-party apps or any applications that are um, custom applications for your environment. This can be easily deployed. You, the only thing that you need to consider is when you are sysprepping the image, because we'll have to sysprep the image, so it can be generalized. Um, we need to make sure that the applications are compatible to be uh, sysprepped. So this is the thing that you need to speak with your developers and you can uh, figure out a way for you to achieve this. But um, this is a, a good way for you to use a reference image that is installed on a virtual machine because this virtual machine is not dependent on any drivers. So for example, if you are having multiple hardware, uh, multiple make and model hardware, laptops, desktops, uh, what you can do is you can create different images for the different makes and models, which can include drivers as well. And the drivers can be deployed during the uh, actual deployment uh, with a single task from the MDT. So um, it's a good way for you to have a general image and from this image, you can create your more custom images that you can deploy into your environment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start installing the applications one by one. They are free and easy to install. So it's not a thing that I need to um, be detailed about. So let me just install them all. Let's create a shortcut on the desktop. Okay, I'm not going to run the app. And the last application that I'm going to install is the tree size. So, yep. I don't want, I want a desktop icon because I want to see if the desktop I icon is going to appear on my uh, profile when I actually deploy the image itself, the final version of the image. But if you want or if you have any custom links, I'm going to delete the software for now because I don't need it anymore. Um, if you have any custom links, what you can do is, because this image it does not contain any user accounts except from the administrator account, of course, uh, what you can do is you can go to users and allow to see the hidden files. In there, you want to open the default um, profile for the users. And under desktop, you will see that it's currently empty, but you can populate your 
um, shortcuts in here. So every time a new user profile is created on this machine, it will um, go into the default and copy this desktop item and will place it for every single user. So every new user account will be with the same desktop using this image. So just to test this, I'm going to create a new, for example, contact that is going to be Nick, the IT guy. Okay. And yeah, I think it looks nice <laughs> that way. So I'm going to create this and we'll see if this contact card will be indeed deployed, will be copied over to um, the new profiles that we log in to this machine after we deploy it. So after playing around with the image itself, I've installed three applications so we can see if the applications are going to be successfully captured and later deployed on my image. I'm going to use my um, deployment server or um, more specifically the deployment workbench to create a new task sequence. And if you remember from the last video, if you uh, expand the deployment shares, you will see that under task sequence, we have the task sequence that we used yesterday to um, actually deploy the operating system. This time around, uh, we are going to create a new task sequence and I'm going to name this Windows 10, not 19, <laughs> Windows 10 Capture and it's going to be Capture Windows 10 Enterprise x64. If you want to add any comments, of course, you can add them in the uh, comment section below. And instead of using standard client task sequence, I'm going to switch to sysprep and capture. So I'm going to click next. And I'm going to select the operating system that we deployed yesterday. This is an important thing. If you deployed this operating system and you want to capture it, don't uh, just remove the operating system or if you try to use a different op operating system, I'm pretty sure that it most probably the capture will fail. So it's a good idea when you deploy an operating system to use it later to capture this image. So I'm going to select this one. And again, you can you have the option to activate your windows, but in the end, when you actually deploy the image itself, there will be another option to add this key. So I'm going to uh, select the not uh, specify product key. Again, we need to specify uh, full name user, NLB administrator, and NLB solutions. I noticed that this one, unfortunately, um, is only to uh, to add more information to the task sequence itself. It's not related that much to the capturing of the image or deploying of the image. So don't worry what you input in here. So um, use specified local administrator password. Again, I don't want to use an administrator password for now. On a later state, when we actually deploy the image, I'm going to create a new account that is going to be the local administrator and we are going to disable the administrator. Please note that MDT requires this administrator account to deploy the actual image, so don't disable the administrator prior to capturing and deploying the image. So I'm going to click next and finish. Now that we have capture Windows 10 Enterprise, I'm going to open the properties. And in there, you will see that again, I have the task sequence, which, which is a bit different from the task sequence while we are deploying the image itself. You can see that we have the execute sysprep, which is going to generalize our image and it's going to capture that image on a later state. So again, not that much uh, of, of uh, things that you can do in here. So we are going to close this one and we are going to switch to our deployment share properties and um, of course I talked a bit about the rules yesterday now we are going to change the rules because as I said yesterday this is going to skip the capture but we want to enable the capture so there are a few modifications that we are going to do in here
So the modifications that I'm going to do on my rules are I'm going to select no to install an operating system. I'm going to select no to skip capture. Skip administrator password, I don't want to set that uh, as for now. Skip the product key, yes, I don't want to set it. Skip computer backup, yes, and skip BitLocker, yes. I'm going to add another value, which is do capture, yes. And this is going to force the capture itself. So I'm going to apply the settings and I think that no other rules will be needed as for now. We'll just keep this plain and simple. Of course, there are other rules that we are going to play in on a later state. So we can modify and make the image uh, as, um, as friendly as possible. So um, you will need less administrative effort to deploy it. Uh, I'm going to again switch to 64-bit platform, apply the settings and I'm going to right click and update the deployment chair because we want our system and our deployment chair to be up to date. So now that we have uh, configured the task sequence, configured the rules and updated the deployment chair, I'm going to switch back to my virtual machine and we can start the actual capturing. Few things that I want to mention during my practice deploying this and capturing this is it's a, always a good idea before you go ahead and capture the actual image to make a snapshot of the virtual machine. That way you will, you can always revert this snapshot and you will have the latest information because the capturing process will, as I said, uh, run a sysprep. It's going to prepare the system. It's going to be generalized. If you want, you can always revert the changes. If the capturing is unsuccessful, you can always revert to this uh, latest snapshot that you did and or checkpoint depending on the virtualization platform and uh, you can have the clean image with all the installed applications and you can easily troubleshoot that way. Another thing that uh, you want to consider is you can always uh, defragment the C partition, you can always run a few cleaners, you can always optimize any Windows settings or disable any Windows settings. Um, I'm not sure if uh, the, the Windows settings will be hard coded or if they will be sysprepped after the actual generalization. So try yourself, do it with the snapshots, revert, capture again, see what will happen and create the best image for your company. Now that we have a few prerequisites, let's say, out of the way, I'm going to open a file explorer and I'm going to browse on my Windows deployment server share and I'm going to try and open the deployment share um, using the uh, IP address because uh, this virtual machine is not in my domain still and it's not uh, it's only in the network so I'm going to open this share and we'll see uh, if I'll be able to browse it it's asking me for my credentials, so I'm going to specify the credentials for my my domain admin credentials. Press enter. And now that we are in the deployment chair, I'm going to open the scripts folder, scroll down, and I will run a script called lighttouch vbs script. So what you need to do is you need to run this lighttouch vbs script and it will basically start the process of capturing the image itself. So I'm going to open this. and it's going to load some additional scripts to this one and if we configured everything properly again it's asking me for credentials to access the share okay And now you can see that we again are in the uh, task sequence uh, 
table where you can select again from the Windows 10 Enterprise. This is for deployment and capture Windows 10 Enterprise. This is the new task sequence that we've created. So I'm going to select this radio button and click next. And you can see that now it's asking me to capture the image. And this is because we selected uh, specifically for the capturing sequence to, to ask if we want to capture this. You can see that the location is my deployment share captures. And you can see that the file name will be Windows 10 Capture. Of course, you can change the name to Windows 10, Windows 10 Enterprise 64 bit. So you will know what is the um, image that you are going to use. And the first option is capture an image of this reference computer. I'm going to leave this one and click next. Of course, I forgot to uh, remove the last uh, summary page. And this is the summary page saying uh, what is going to do. You can see do capture. Yes. So I'm going to click begin and we are going to sit back and enjoy the capturing process itself. I'm not going to leave you to see the entire process. Um, it's quite lengthy, but uh, what it will do is it will apply the uh, Windows pre-installation environment. It's possible that uh, the, the virtual machine will restart so it can unlock any locked files and it can run the um, sysprep operation successfully and prepare the uh, operating system to be a generalized image. So let's see if this will be uh, the thing right here. Okay, you can see that it's restarting. And again, it's loading the operating system. And from here, it should again log in with uh, the administrator account and continue the process. If you're experiencing any problems uh, with this one, you can always revert the virtual machine to the um, snapshot or checkpoint that you've uh, pre-configured and you can uh, run the process again and see if uh, this will help. But you can see that uh, it's actually started to execute the sysprep operation. And if I bring this up, you will see that uh, it's currently processing the generalization uh, phase of the sysprep plugins. So this is going to sysprep the image and later it will start capturing and you will see percentage. But I'm just going to pause a bit so we don't make this video lengthy and I'm going to continue with uh, the next step. So after another restart, it's going to load into pre-installation environment where the actual capturing will begin. And uh, while the capturing is running, I'm going to switch to my um, Windows deployment server and I'm going to open the deployment share so I can show you uh, where the actual image is and how the actual image is growing over time. So. Now it's running the uh, task sequences one by one and uh, it's uh, up to the point where it's going to create the actual WIM image. Now the percentages should appear in theory. Let's see if this is the case in practice. But uh, what I've noticed, if you are running up to this point, it should not uh, make any problems for you. So you can see that uh, the capturing has started. So I'm going to switch real fast to my um, WDS and show you the process from there. So now that I'm on the WDS, I'm going to browse on the local partition MDT and open the deployment share go to captures and you can see right here that my WIM image is slowly growing over time. It's currently on 3%. So this is a lengthy process and you will need to leave it that way so it can finish. But if you are experiencing any problems, a thing that uh, came into my mind, if you are experiencing problems uh, with creating the WIM image, an error can appear. You need to check the sharing or the permissions in general of the deployment share. It's possible that uh, the um, account that you are using does not have the proper permissions. So make sure that sharing and NTFS permissions allow for you to capture this image. I'm going to pause the video and continue when our image is fully captured.
After succeeding in capturing the image, you will see this final window say, stating that uh, the operating system deployment completed successfully. And from this time, uh, what you can do is you can just shut down or you can revert the virtual machine and leave it in the original state. Upon looking on the uh, deployment work share, you will see that uh, the WIM image is... Um, almost as large as a normal operating system image 3.7 gigabytes and with this WIM image what you can achieve it uh, with it is uh, to go ahead into the operating systems right click import operating system and instead of full uh, source of set files what you can do is select the custom image file and you can see that it's saying add a captured image that you wish to deploy. So I'm going to click next, browse, go to this captured WIM file, open. Okay. Next, setup files are not needed. Do not copy any setup files or you can choose the option to copy Windows 7 or any later uh, setup files. To, from a specific path, but I'm going to leave it like this. The destination directory name will be Windows 10 Enterprise Captured. So this is going to be the customized image that you um, already pre-configured. Next, and this is going to use this WIM image to create this uh, new captured image that we are going to use and create an offline ISO file. Now that we have uh, the import of the operating system complete, I'm going to click finish and right on the top you can see that I have the Windows IBS image that I can rename if I want to, for example, NOB Windows 10 Enterprise 64-bit. Okay, so I will know that this operating system is my custom image that I've uh, deployed customized and captured. Now that we have uh, our uh, WIM image already imported, what I can do is um, to make things clean, I will just uh, remove the deployment image that we did um, earlier, so we can have a cleaner. Uh, so I'm going to completely delete the items. Okay, next, next and finish and we'll have only the single image that I've uh, deployed and captured and it's customized and I want to use this one. So to in order for me to deploy the image or create an ISO file that I can um, burn to a thumb drive for example and give to my administrators, I will have to go to the advanced configuration and first create the profile. So if I right click and create a new profile, so the profile will be NOB Windows 10 Enterprise 64 bit. And in there, I'm going to select only the folders applications and operating systems. And I'm going to click next and finish. Now that we have the NOB Windows 10 Enterprise, I will switch to media and I will right click and create a new media. So for media, I'm going to select a folder called media, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new one so it won't be confusing. So for media, this one is the old one, so I'm going to remove this one completely. and create a new media folder and in there we will deploy our ISO image that we are going to use to um, deploy our already custom um, operating system. So I'm going to click OK and for selection profile I'm going to select NLB Windows 10 Enterprise, click Next and wait for it to finish. OK, now that we have the media already configured, I can click properties and it's pretty much the same window as you can see on the deployment share where you have rules, you have PE and you have the bootstrap ini. So 
what you can do with this one is I'm going to remove the generate 64 uh, 86 boot image because we only need 64 and generate a light touch bootable ISO and this ISO will be called NLB Windows 10 64 okay and under the rules I'm going to play a bit with them so uh, you can see that uh, when I'm deploying the final version of the image I won't be asked that much much of a questions so I've pre-populated some uh, interesting things that you you can do as well and you can see right here that most of the things are being skipped except from the applications because I want uh, my um, administrator account to be disabled and on its place to uh, for me to create another local account for better security so you can see that um, I have most of the things being skipped and um, the domain membership will not be skipped so I will join my computer to my domain directly from the deployment image and what I can do is I can click apply to this one and then go to Windows PE switch to 64 bit because I want 64 uh, bit and apply and I think we are good to go so the next thing I want to do is I'm going to right click once again and when I click on update me media content it will start generating the ISO image using the WIM file that we've uh, captured from the customization so I'm going to leave this until it's completely uh, finished and we can continue from there so upon finishing the wizard I actually realized that I haven't configured the proper task sequence and I haven't included the task sequence in the um, actual media so what I did is I went ahead and opened the properties of the profile, selected the task sequences, then went ahead and deleted the old task sequences, created a new one, a normal task sequence, and then what I did is under the task sequences, right on the bottom you can see that I've configured NLB new account, NLB administrator group and disabled the local administrator. And these are use, I use the general run command line and in there uh, what I did is I've added a command line um, to execute, to create a new user uh, from command line make it administrator and disable the local admin account as well so after i did this i've again updated the media content and if i go to my media folder i will see that i have my nlb windows 10 64-bit iso file ready to be booted from so let's start uh, another virtual machine and see if the deployment is the way that we want it so I'm booting from my CD, from my NLB uh, solutions custom image that uh, we configured together. And uh, this is actually an ISO image that is attached to uh, my virtual machine. And you know how to configure the boot options. So you will see the, the familiar Microsoft deployment toolkit uh, pre-installation environment. And um, it's going to say that um, it found another deployment but uh, this is because I pre-booted the virtual machine just to double check and see if it's uh, fully working because I want to be sure that uh, you guys can see the uh, full action in place so you can see uh, I have the run the deployment deployment wizard it's going to load the files and the task sequences and this is the task sequence that we configured that I configured on my uh, Windows deployment server so I'm going to click next and on the left side you can see that I only have the details that I've uh, selected in my rules to be applied so I'm going to change the name to NLB PC01 I'm going to the to join the computer to the domain NLB lab organizational units um, I don't think that uh, I need an organizational unit right now so it should bring it to the computer uh, container but let's see I'm going to specify my domain administrator oops I got the password wrong and the domain is NLB lab so let's see if this will work 
tasks and uh, this is where I said it's a good idea for you to keep track of these product keys um, let's say that you want yourself or you have a security team that is responsible for them to activate the Windows SSO or you have a KMS server in your environment this is uh, a way for you to I'm going to leave this for now and uh, you can see that if you remember if you um, ro um, roll back a bit on the video you will see that I've configured the um, Pacific time so it's already grayed out but if I configure the time zone as well uh, it will be um, grayed out here and I didn't allow languages to be um, allowed to be configured when the deploying is, is in place so I'm going to click next and hopefully my image will start deploying I'm going to pause the video in here and I'm going to continue when the image is fully deployed so we can check and see what's the final verdict so fast forward it uh, it took some time but in the end I have my image currently deployed I'm waiting for the final window hopefully it will appear but uh, note that um, all the applications are here and all of the uh, settings that we pre-configured are here first you will be logged with the administrator account so uh, don't be alarmed hopefully if my script worked correctly um, it will be disabled on the next restart or if I um, log off and log on so I will test this and will confirm if uh, everything is successful and we can wrap up the video then okay after a restart on the machine if I try to log in um, let me try a password let me see the administrator password is not correct but if I try hard enough it's not correct at the moment let let me try with another user you can see that uh, I'm currently uh, into NLB lab domain so I can directly log in with uh, my um, administrator account the name of the PC changed to NLB PC01 which is the, the way we want to see it NLB admin let me see if my deployment or if the final um, script yep the final script did execute and now um, my NOB uh, admin which is should be my uh, other local administrator um, is in place so it's creating a new profile for it and it should be uh, with um, with all the applications that uh, we pre-configured we pre-customized so you can see um, I have the Nick the IT guy so this is a brand new profile and it did use the um, default profile you can see that I have the notepad and it's accessible you can see that I have the CPU Z application and if I go ahead and search for three let me see it's not able to find it at the moment but it should be here the tree file the tree size application so let me go and open system properties from here let me just let me find control panel okay uninstall a program well uh, there it is the tree size free is available let me search once again it's not able to find it at the moment but it is installed on this machine so let me scroll down it's not present in the applications so you definitely need to test this out yourself and confirm that uh, all the applications are uh, going to work properly so there it is tree size and if I execute this the application is here it did not create a shortcut so it's possible that or it's needed for you to create a shortcut uh, for any applications that are not appearing like this one but in general all the apps are working the image is working and I want to double check just to see if my local administrator account is disabled 
you can see that the local building administrator account is disabled so um, you can have better security that way creating a another local administrator so you can um, work with it instead of uh, using the local admin so this is pretty much on how you can customize capture and then deploy your custom image to any virtual machine or in your case you're going to deploy it to physical machines laptop desktops this was Nick from NLB Solutions. I know this is a lengthy video. I apologize, but I wanted to be as detailed as possible because this process took me around two, three weeks to uh, for me to configure everything and to deploy it properly. So I think it will be valuable for you to see how it's done. If you like the video, you can always hit the like button, share the video, share it with your colleague administrators see if i missed something and you can put uh, any comments in the comment section below and i will try to answer them as soon as possible once again nick once again nlb solutions dropping the best it videos on the web